our Sunday service. We're so grateful that you're here. Uh, and, and those of you on social media as well, of course, we love you too. We're going to start our service right now by singing our opening chant, God is my source. God is my source, God is my power, God gives me everything I need, so I give thanks for all my blessings, God gives me everything I need, God is my source. Everything I need. So true, so true, so true. Welcome to our 945 service here at North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. We're so grateful you chose this as your place for worship this morning. If you're here in the sanctuary, please phones off. You at home, phones off. We're going to have some church. Ah, so let's pray. How grateful we are to stop in this moment and feel that presence, feel the presence of God, the only power, the only life, the only source, the only supply, the creator of all things, creating this service right here and right now. We are so aware of our oneness and union with God that something glorious is happening. Our heart, our mind, our soul is wide open to receive the word by our blessed Dr. Mark today. We are celebrating life. We are celebrating God is our good. Good is our God this day. We're standing in love and truth. Something wonderful is happening. Blessing. Our music ministry going to rock our world, blessing our tech ministry. They're going to keep us in the light and the love. How blessed we are for this time together. Right here, right now, we are lifted, we are shifted, and we are healed for this time together. How grateful, how grateful. I release this word into the law of mind where it says yes, yes, yes. And so it is in agreement we say Amen.
Would you please rise? We'll say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory ever. Amen. Please remain standing for our congregational song, Make a Joyful Noise. Make a joyful noise. joyful noise to your source and your supply. Celebrate as one, grateful for the time we share. Celebrate as one, unified as we declare. God is love. is our time to be still, to connect with our high holy self. Let yourself breathe deeply in and out. Find your mantra. God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. I am that. I am that.
hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord. And where there's doubt, true faith in you. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there's despair in life, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, only light. Where there's sadness, ever joy. Oh, Master, grant that I To be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. Make me a channel of your peace. It is in pardoning that we giving to all souls that we receive and in dying that we're born to eternal Hello, good morning. Thank you for being with us today. It's good to have you here. So yes, I want to talk about peace a little bit. And one of the things I know based on our teaching, The Science of Mind, that if my peace is dependent on external things, I'm always going to be in trouble. You know, if I say, well, I could be really peaceful when this calms down over here, and I can be peaceful when this is this, this way, and I can be peaceful when these people behave this way, I think it has to start, honestly, with the decision that we make for ourselves, you know, that I'm going to choose to be peaceful inside, inside my own body-mind, inside my own consciousness, regardless 
of what's happening out here. And I realize that sounds like a hard thing to do. And in fact, yes, actually it is. But I believe that in the science of mind, we have a technology, we have a way of being that I think this is absolutely achievable. I think it's entirely possible. So if you hadn't noticed, and I'm sure you have, because I certainly have noticed lately, the people are on edge, huh? You know, boy, there's there are a lot of people on edge, that there is a level of anxiety that's just sort of free floating around the universe, it feels like. And now I think we get good at explaining why we are the way we are. You know, in recent decades, I think we've gotten very, very sophisticated. Well, you know, when I was five, I had a polyester blanket in my crib and blah, blah, you know. It's just we, we, we get really smart about explaining why. But all of that explaining is about something external. It's about the world of effects. And the world of effects are always, always changing. And what we have to remember in Science of Mind is out here is not cause, in here is. Right? But when I turn away from the appearances of the world and pray, I know that I will be lifted. In fact, I know what happens for all of us. If we will turn away from appearances and we will pray, we will be lifted into this place of grace. Ernest Holmes says grace is the divine givingness of spirit that God only knows to give of God's self to us. But I know that if I will do the inner work, I will feel better. But I got to tell you something. Sometimes I just don't want to do it. You know, I'll be driving along, you know, because, you know, the car, my, I, I think of my car as my ashram on wheels, you know. I do an, um, so much spiritual work inside the vehicle, you know. I, like, as soon as I get in the car, it's like, okay, time to pray, time to chant, better, you know. And so I'll be worked up about something, perhaps another driver, just say, or, you know, something I hear on the radio. It doesn't matter. But so I get worked up, and I think, you know, I need to pray, or I'm going to push in my little uh, CD chant, you know, God's the love that I am, or something like that. But then I have this thought, well, don't do it just yet. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm really telling you the truth. Say, well, you know, I'll go for another exit. I just, just, you know, I'm just, I'm just going to stay in my stew, my little funk, for a whole another mile. In a mile, then I'll be ready to let it go. And of course, you know, that mile often turns into two miles or three miles because I'm just not done chewing on whatever bone I'm chewing on, this, that, and the other. So I think it's just a funny thing about the human personality. I know if I pray, if I start to chant, if I start chanting God's the love that I am in a matter of seconds, I will start to feel better, and yet I postpone. I post, you know, just, just for another mile. I'll go one or two more exits, you know, and then we'll see how that is. Um, so if you practice the science of mind, and I suspect we all do, and I know no two people practice the exact same way, and that's fine, but the things that we encourage people to practice, that we say this will help you to achieve a more peaceful state of mind, regardless of what's happening out here, is we encourage people to treat, to pray in the affirmative, and to study, and to meditate, to find a way to be of service in the world, to tithe, to practice gratitude on a daily basis, to forgive every day. Now, this sounds like a lot of stuff, but it's actually just a different way of thinking. It's a different way of holding your life, a different way of seeing yourself and how you participate in life. Things change us from the inside out, right? So as we are different on the inside, we will start to experience something different out here. This is how spiritual principle operates. Gosh, I wish it was the other way. I wish it was like a post-it theory, that I could just slap a post-it of spiritual truth on me and I would be transformed, but that is not how it works. So understanding the principles of science of mind is one thing. But actually really getting it and incorporating it and applying it and using it in our life is actually another. I think it's, it's easier to worry. You know, it is. And like I say all the time, worry is just a problem prayer. You want to worry, that's like praying the problem, you know? <sighs> but I know worry is easy, isn't it? You know, I mean, I can just slip right into it. And if I want support in my worry, I know exactly who to call. I know who will get in the sinking boat with me, you know? Hey, want to go for a ride? The ship is sinking. It's amazing how willing people are to jump in, you know? It is. You know, but, but the thing that will set me free, though, 
is not to worry and not to call someone unless it's a practitioner, right? The thing that I know will set me free is to sit and pray and take a little bit of time to commune with the Spirit of God that's within. You know, we know scientifically that our brain actually puts out a different type of brain wave when we're doing spiritual practice, when we're meditating, when we're praying. So to me, that says we are actually in the process of being rewired from the inside out. Because if we're emitting a different type of brain wave, that means something different's happening. Right? So the, when we're caught up in the world of effects, when we're caught up in what our, our current problems and challenges are, when we're caught up, that's hell, right? Because Ernest Holmes says hell is a state of consciousness. It is not real estate. It is not a place. It is a state of consciousness where we feel separate, where we are at odds with life and at odds with ourself. But prayer changes things. And when I say prayer changes things, what I mean by that is that prayer changes us. So the way to a peaceful consciousness, I believe, is through our attention inward to pray, to meditate, to do practices. You know, as a kid, I thought it was a petition. Like, please, God, send me some peace. Please, God, send me some peace. Please, God, send me some peace. But you know, actually, looking at that now, I realized that what the universe had to send me were situations to be peaceful in. Mmm, really makes you think about what you're praying for, doesn't it, you know? My mother used to always say, I pray every day, God give me patience, God give me patience. And, and I'd look at her and say, and here we are. Here we are. So what do you mean? And I said, we're your opportunity to practice. This was as an adult, of course. As a kid, I didn't get this at all. But as an adult, it's like, well, you know, when you say, God give me patience, or God, I want peace, God supports us with the experiences, the circumstances where we get to practice being peaceful, where we get to practice being patient. Have you noticed how if you say to the universe in the morning, God, I want to be a loving person today. Really, today's the day I'm going to really start. I'm going to be a loving, loving person on the face of the earth. And what happens? The one person, the one person who can set you off shows up in your life. Now, it has to. It has to because you have declared into the universal mind, I choose to be a best version of myself. So everything that separates me from being that best version of myself has to show up so I get healed. Watch how you pray, I'm telling you. But <laughs> praying, praying, honest to God, changes things because it changes us. Now, I don't think of it as a petition, of course. That's not the science of mind way. Now, when I do inner work, when I sit down and close my eyes, the purpose is to align with what is greater, with what is beyond the human story. Because there's always a spiritual truth that's beyond all of the human drama that we are going through. I believe that the love in us, the love in other people, the love of God that is evidenced on the face of the earth, I believe that that's real. And we have to forgive everything else. This means that we are either giving love or we're going to contribute something not so good into situations, right? And if we're not giving love, if we are not God's vessels for expressing love and light and joy and peace on the earth, I believe that we're going to hurt. So remember that prayer changes us because prayer changes our mind. It changes our craziness in the moment. And I know, I know because I have experienced this for decades that I can just be crazy as a bed bug on the inside. And if I just stop for a minute, and usually, usually the thing that sort of brings me into the stadium, if you will, you know, the thing that brings me into the stadium is I'll say the Lord's Prayer. Right? And then after the Lord's Prayer, I will just affirm and affirm and affirm I'm one with God, I'm one with love, I am one with peace, I am at peace. Because again, prayer changes us, it changes our mind, it changes what's happening in here. You know, if I'm not stuck on a position, and see, this is where I know I, I, I get caught this way. If I'm not stuck on some position uh, out in the world, 
um, then it's not, that's probably not a problem. But when I get stuck, it's got to be this way. They should do this. They should say, why don't people... I, I know, I know, I can hear it all in my head. I'm not peaceful. By stuck, I mean that it needs to be my way, you know? And I do love my way. Frank Sinatra and I, we love our way, you know? It's just the way it is. It's the way it should be. But no, I'm just kidding. But I really, I, what I want us to have an awareness of this morning is that it all starts in our mind. It starts in our mind and our heart. It starts in, 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 in the way I think it works is first it comes into my mind, right? An idea comes into my mind because the way God gives to us is God gives to us through ideas, right? So an idea will come. And that idea will be in our mind for an undetermined period of time before it sort of moves down into our heart. It's like, ah, oh, this is a good thing. From my mind into my heart, this is a good thing. But then there's that further little journey where it goes from your heart down into your gut. And I think of this as the kerplunk phase of incorporating spiritual truth. It's like, okay, intellectually, I agree with that. And over time, it kind of comes into my heart and I say, yes, this is how I want to be in the world. This is how I think we should all be. This is the demonstration of truth. But then when it really gets inside you, it kind of like goes kaplunk. Do you know what I mean? Like when it really, really is in you and you say, yes, this is it. This is how it's supposed to be. So in the Lord's Prayer, there is the phrase, thy will be done. Now, I know this is one of the reasons why a lot of people don't like the Lord's Prayer. Because in their mind, thy will is not going to be good. <laughs> Thy's will can only make me suffer and struggle. Now, if that is what you really think about God, today is your opportunity to cash in. You have won the lottery here, really, because the God that we believe in, that God is... The will of God, Ernest Holmes says in our textbook, is always for greater life, greater love, greater peace, and does not hurt anyone. Wow. So if this is for greater life, greater love, greater peace, and does not hurt anyone, that is in fact the will of God for us. So thy will be done. If I believe that's the will of God, I have no problem saying thy will be done. I can say this because I trust the will of God for each and every one of us is good, absolute good. Now, where is God? Thy will be done. Well, God is inside of us, right? So, but we don't always agree with, with God, do we? You know, the, and so again, I come, come back and say, you know, that if we take a few minutes, and it doesn't take a lot, I think the point is the effort, you know? So two minutes to begin your day, right, to, to strengthens our bond with the presence, the power, the principle of God that is within us. You know, just, just by giving those first couple of minutes of your day to spirit. You know, in Science of Mind, we don't talk a lot about this, but I think it's absolutely necessary to our spiritual growth that a little humility, perhaps, you know, it's, uh, it's not ours to control every situation. Now, I don't know about you, but I have certainly been that person where I thought the universe needed my input on pretty much everything. <laughs> but lo and behold, it doesn't. Lo and behold, the universe is functioning absolutely fine because the great law of life for everyone, the great law of life is it is done unto you as you believe, right? So people are experiencing the result of what they believe right now. And that can change in a moment. It can change instantly. You see, because transformation happens in us through, through the grace of God, through the grace of God. Now, we believe that God has already given the gift, that God is already giving us everything God is going to give. Because the idea of withholding, you know, God does not withhold from us. That doesn't exist in divine consciousness. So the world will not be different until we are, oh, that again. Yes, the world won't be new until we're new. The world won't be loving. The world won't be peaceful until we are. So this is the hard part of the teaching. You know, when, when I look at the world and I say, it shouldn't be that way. They shouldn't do this. They shouldn't say that. It shouldn't be like that. I then have to say, okay, where am I like that? You know, so I see war in the world, and I say, that shouldn't be there. And I go, okay, where am I at war? Who am I at war with? What am I at war with? You know, where do I drop bombs on other people? Hmm? 
You know, because this, this is personal work. You know, where, where, where I'm very, very critical, I have to say, okay, let me look here. Let me look here again and again. If I could become enlightened, we like to say. You know, if I could become enlightened, oh my God, it would be so great if I could just become enlightened. I think the truth is you already are. God has already placed everything within you. The fact is that we forget. We forget what we know. It's, it's, it's covered up with the lies of the world, the error conditioning that we are confronted with all the time. But if God has already given us all, and I believe that God has, we say, well, where is it? It's just covered up. You know, that we, and so our work is to get rid of all the extra that's been added. You know, one of the things we say about great spiritual masters who have walked on the face of the earth, there was nothing different between them and us, except they didn't have the extra baggage that we seem to be attached to. You know, those, those little special bags, oh, I could never let that go. That was just really painful and special. I'm going to hang on to that. Yes, yes, yes. So that's the difference between us and spiritual masters. They were better at letting that stuff go. We carry it around, you know? We get storage units. Yes, absolutely. <sighs> what I know, I believe this is so for me, and if it's so for me, I suspect it is for you, that life out here, my experience of life, just all of it together, works better when I myself am peaceful. Yeah, I think people think that if I'm peaceful, I'm going to be ineffective in the world, and I don't think that's true at all, you know, because when I'm peaceful, I find that I'm not as attached to the outcome being a specific way, right? And when you're not attached, attached to the outcome being a specific way, you actually have more power, right? Because uh, I'm unattached to my personal agenda. I really can say, all right, thy will be done, right? Because I believe for each and every one of us that we have like a spiritual blueprint, a spiritual DNA. And I believe that each and every one of us, we are designed from the inside out, to have a happy, fulfilled, loving, creatively expressed, abundant, joyful life. I believe that is the will of God for each of us. I believe that that's how we are coded, if you will. Right? So now, if I could just relax and receive the good that God has created for me. And like Emma Curtis, says, Emma Curtis Hopkins says, if God has created good for you, shouldn't you receive it? I mean, isn't it only cosmically polite? to receive the good that God has gone through all the trouble to create for you, right? So the human mind loves to find the needle in the haystack, though, don't we? To just say, well, yes, 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 this is happening, and this is happening, and this is happening. Because like right now, today, more people are meditating on the face of Earth than have ever meditated before and doing spiritual practice and involved in service projects and things to help humanity. I think more of that is happening now than has ever happened before. Wow, that's a really good sign. But the human mind loves to see the needle in the haystack. Look, this is still wrong here, and this needs fixing here, and that needs fixing there. Well, you know, everything is unfolding according to a higher good. So when we see error, I'm not saying that we should ignore it, but we have to also know, you know what, everything is unfolding according to a higher good here. So you see, see, see what's working well. You know, because even on the worst day, even on the worst day for any of us, we have stuff to be grateful for. We really do, that we have people in our life who love us, who care about us, that we have a roof over our head, on and on and on. If you tell yourself something along the lines of, if only blah, blah, blah would happen, I could be really happy, right? And we can all fill that blank in, that blah, blah, blah. We could all fill that in with something uniquely of our own, right? I, then I would be happy. But again, this is saying that outside conditions, externals have dominion, they have power over me. No, I don't want that. You know, if your mind operates this way, uh, that, you know, I will be happy if, if only blah, blah, blah. Uh, if your mind operates this way and you get it, whatever it is you say you want, the fact is you still won't be happy. Because how many times have we said, oh, if I could just achieve this, if only this experience could happen, if I could da 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 then I would be really happy. And we get there and go, oh, that wasn't it. That was kind of a disappointment. I guess I was telling myself something that really wasn't true there. Because there is a place in us that needs to complain. 
You know, I mean, the, the human personality likes that. There's a place in us that needs to complain, and that place, but, but this is it, that place within us that likes to complain is the unhealed place. Now, Emma Curtis Hopkins says metaphysical rule number one is to not complain. Your relationship with God is really just the mirror image of your relationship with yourself. Things out here change. But things in here unfold, they grow, they develop, they mature. Your relationship with God is just a mirror image of your relationship with yourself. You know, in the Bible, it talks about, and I've always loved this, the image of if you build your house on rock or if you build your house on sand. So if you build your house on sand when you have bad weather, as we are seeing in a good part of our country right now, then if your house is built on sand, then it's, it's, it's not going to last, right? But if you build your house on rock, right, and then I would say, what is that rock? That rock is our relationship with God. That rock is um, the love that is inside of us. Um, and, and the house that we are talking about is, is your sense of self, your sense of security, your self-esteem, your well-being. You know, the, the, we are never less or smaller than the things that happen to us. You know, I think we get very identified with our body. I'm just this little body, but, uh, and I have a little bit of spirit within me. Well, the fact is you are this body, but you are also an expression of this infinite spirit. You are this big, infinite consciousness that just happens to be working with a little old body right now while you're here on Earth. You know, but so it takes practice, I think, to, to continually choose peace, to say, I, you know, heaven is everywhere, but it's also within me. And I can experience it right now, regardless of what's going on. We, how can that possible? How could I possibly be in a peaceful, heavenly place with all that's going on? Well, because people would rather, here's what I understand now, people would rather think about God than actually have an experience of God. People would rather think about praying than actually do the pray, you know? Like, oh, when I get home, I'm going to really pray. When I get home, I'm going to really do all this. You know, that it's about an ongoing, for me, I think it's an ongoing courting of the presence. So if we release the situation to God, dear God, release this from me, you know? I mean, sometimes, Anne, Anne Lamott said that there are three kinds of prayers. Um, wow, thanks, and help that all prayers really fall into those categories. Now, think about that, and I think, you know, I kind of agree with that. That sometimes it's like, wow, what a beautiful day, God. Thank you so much, you know? Or other prayers are like, oh, I'm healed. Thank you, God, for that healing. That's wonderful, you know? And, and then there are those prayers, you know, two in the morning when you can't sleep and there's nobody to talk to and your mind is just going crazy. Maybe I'm the only one. I don't know. Um, that that's when, that, those are the help prayers. Those are the help, you know, so, so wow, thanks, and help. And sometimes, yeah, sometimes the appro most appropriate prayer we can make is to say, God, I need help. I need help here. And, you know, just, just implicit in saying, I need help, I believe that is also saying, I know that help's available. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we move closer to that enlightened place within us, you know. We, come, we, come, we can be peaceful regardless of circumstances. You know, we look within to remind ourselves, okay, what are the ways of being loving in the world? Because I know, I know from experience, and I'm talking about a lot of experience here, that it's just better when we connect to that presence of God within. When we take a minute to pray, when we take two minutes to be still and close our eyes and say, God, my thoughts are crazy, but I want to think with you. Let's pray now. So we'll turn our attention, thank you. We'll turn our attention inward together for just a moment to remember that right here, the place whereon we stand is holy ground. We are surrounded and filled with God's loving, intelligent presence. It's the truth about each and every one of us. And I further know that we are all connected on the unseen side of life, that in the mind and heart of God, there is only one. It's us. So in this awareness, I speak the word for each and every one of us, and I here now declare that we are a peaceful consciousness, that we are at peace with ourselves. we are at peace with the Spirit of God within us, we are at peace with each other, we are at peace with the world that we live in. And because we are peaceful, because peace lives in us, 
I know it has its way in the world. It moves out from us to touch all beings everywhere. So I know that change starts from within. And so for each and every one of us today, I know we are willing to surrender thoughts and beliefs and habits and behaviors that do not serve us anymore. They may have served us fine for an earlier time, but where we are on the path right now, we let go of what does not serve us. We let go of untruth. We let go of error beliefs. We let go of thinking that we are small or not much. And we know, we absolutely know with every fiber of our being that we are emanations of the Most High God, that we are the beloved of pure spirit. And so in this awareness, I speak the word for our friends and family members, parents and children, all of those we love and hold near and dear. We see them in our mind's eye and we claim health and wholeness, peace of mind, love, creativity, abundance for each and every one. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in. So if we would imagine ourselves as a center of light and that from this center, our light emanates out to touch all situations and all people who are troubled, who struggle at this time. In our own country and in all countries around the world, in our own home, our own neighborhood, our own block. And now whoever comes to mind that you need to bless, that you need to send a little love to. Do that in your mind's eye now. And so we bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I know we're blessed by being together, that there is raising up today for each and every one of us. We get to be healed. And so with a full heart, I say, thank you, God, that this is the truth. I release this word into the law of mind and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart as we say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much.
got a love like an ocean. I got a love like an ocean in my soul. I got a joy like a fountain. I got joy like a fountain. I got joy just like a fountain. we were going to have some church. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Karen Mitchell, KarenMitchellMusic.com. We have such wonderful artists here. Please check them out and have them at your home as well. Thank you to our musicians here. Magnificent. And Dr. Mark, he always gives you something to chew on, doesn't he? <laughs> so our announcements. Um, if it's your first time here, please come out to our welcome table around the corner to your left. We'll give you a packet that tells you about the things available here in our church and our teaching. And we make it easy for you all to give. You know, they have that QR code on the back of your program. You know, like the thing that's on your restaurant table. And you want to go, can I just have a menu? Is that too much to ask for? <laughs> But you know what? I did it. I did the QR code thing on the back of the uh, program, and it worked great, and it was really easy. So now I'm at the restaurant like, yeah, I got it. I know what's going on. So please, there's many different ways to give. Go to our website and participate in your financial freedom. Um, we have prayer with the practitioner. It's available after service. You can come down right here, and a practitioner will pray with you. If you're on Facebook, jump over to Zoom, and we have a one-minute miracle with you with the practitioner. And um, this Sunday, I mean Sunday, this is Sunday. This Wednesday, Reverend Sydney Steen, Meditation 650. The service is at 7 p.m., and she will be talking about, I found my pony. Now what? <laughs> Don't want to miss that. Um, and oh, you know what, there's still time to sign up for Dr. Mark's Abundance Workshop. Um, it's tomorrow night, Monday, 6.30 to 8.30. And if you want to join new, you can and get downloads for the previous classes. It's a wonderful workshop where you learn how to expand your prosperity, consciousness, and who doesn't want to do that? Uh, class is based on the book Spiritual Economics by Eric Butterworth, and you can sign up online, and the cost is responsible giving, love donation, whatever is moving through you. And the book is available in the bookstore. You guys do this. It, you're just going to love it. Um, we have our Love and Kindness ministry, ministry today. We serve lunch in the park. Um, we'll be serving it today at 1230. And to support this ministry, again, go to our website, look up Gilda Gomez, and you can support through food, donations, or volunteering. Thank you so much. Today, da, 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 practitioner graduation, 1.30 p.m., the sanctuary. We have four magnificent, beautiful new members of our practitioner corps. Please come and celebrate with us and support them. And let 
let's party, because that's what we like to do here at NHCRS. Yes, bravo. Um, Zoom virtual patio, again, you know, you come to a church so that you can commune with your friends. We have Zoom virtual patio before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. Start your day with our Zoom meditation every morning, Monday through Saturday, 7.55 a.m. to 8.15 a.m. And all things North Hollywood Church Religious Science, NorthHollywoodReligiousScience.org. That's where you want to go, okay? Thank you. Peace out. Let's all stand. Yeah, give it up for her. Let's all stand and sing the peace song. So please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I am living love. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.